The CWP100 offers cost-effective, consistent delivery of Amy Grade Water Standards for dialysis at the point of use. This system is designed to meet all current standards of dialysis quality water. The automated heat disinfection of the distribution loop and the automated chemical disinfection of the RO and membranes simply and easily reduce biofilm development and minimizes levels of endotoxin, fungi, yeast, and other microbial contaminants. Greater cost effectiveness is ensured through system efficiency and labor savings. The CWP represents a simple, convenient, and effective disinfection strategy. Advanced electronics and top quality components also ensure quiet, reliable, and safe operation. A multicolor lamp indication unit is located on the upper right of the CWP. The left side panel of the CWP houses the hot water tank and heating components. Located on the upper right of the CWP is the operator panel and access to electrical components. Below the operator panel are the chemical disinfection equipment, which is accessed by a handle on the lower front of the CWP. An interior view of the CWP displays the hot water tank and heat disinfection components to the left, the centrally located inlet water tank, a view of the RO pump and RO membranes can be seen on the lower right of the CWP. The chemical disinfection pump is located on the right side of the CWP below the electrical components. The central water plant or CWP unit works by the purification principle of reverse osmosis or RO. It's the primary method of meeting the water quality demands of a dialysis clinic. By applying pressure with a pump, a portion of the inlet feed water is forced through a semi-permeable membrane. Most solutes, which are dissolved substances in the inlet feed water, cannot pass through the pores of this membrane. The portion of the water that passes through the membrane becomes purified product water. The remaining water becomes more concentrated with solutes and is directed to the drain as reject water. The CWP displays feed water flow rates, product water flow rates, RO reject and return flow rates. Conductivity of the feed water and product water are also displayed. Recovery rate and rejected flow rates are displayed in percentages for monitoring the CWP reverse osmosis parameters and process. The RO membrane consists of interleaved layers of spacer, membrane, and permeate or product water carriers. This spacer allows for the movement of the concentrate past the membrane and permeate carrier carries the purified water out of the element. The CWP unit removes at least 95% of the total dissolved salts and more than 99% of the bacteria and endotoxins from the inlet water. Product water is an extremely important factor in achieving and maintaining the required quality of the dialysis fluid. Approximately 94% of the fluid in the final dialysate is composed of RO water. Chemical and microbial water quality depends on technical parameters, but also the proper maintenance of the equipment and the distribution loop to minimize contaminants. The water quality is a very important factor in achieving and maintaining an adequate quality of the dialysis fluid. The microbiological quality of the dialysis fluid is a function of various factors. Neglecting any of these could result in a poor water quality. Examples of these factors are adequate inlet water quality, regular and proactive chemical disinfection of the CWP unit, regular and proactive hot water circulation of the distribution loop, drain connections from the dialysis machines to the drainage system with an air gap to avoid microbial contamination. Quality checks consist of the testing and recording of the CWP measurements daily in log sheets and monthly bacterial testing. 
To get an indication of the water quality, the CWP unit measures the conductivity of the water expressed in microsiemens per centimeter. The conductivity is a measurement of the dissolved salts in the water. It should be used as an indicator of the performance of the reverse osmosis system. The water produced by the CWP unit should be analyzed on a regular basis to verify that it conforms with regulations or standards for water for dialysis. The inlet water is usually pre-treated with active carbon filters, softener, and a particle filter before it flows to the CWP unit. Depending on the local water quality and regulations, different pretreatment equipment may be required. The product water from the CWP unit supplies the distribution loop, which then supplies the dialysis machines with the product water. The CWP is a direct feed system. Product water flows directly from the unit to all points of use, returning back to the inlet tank on the RO. There is no product water holding tank. The CWP unit includes a heating unit for the distribution loop to minimize any form of microbiological growth and biofilm formation. To make sure the microbiological quality is maintained, the system has a semi-automatic cleaning and chemical disinfection procedure for the RO stage that keeps the membrane surfaces clean and minimizes bacterial growth. The quality of the water used for dialysis must be verified by regular water analysis. The WP unit is operated with the buttons on the operator panel. It displays alarm information and allows entering parameters and data. The information displayed for the daily operation of the CWP is available for all users and requires no access code. The CWP utilizes several access codes, however, to protect accidental modifications to settings that could cause potential equipment or patient harm. Certain tasks like chemical disinfection and setting alarm parameters require access codes. For more detailed information, refer to the service manual. The start button initiates the CWP unit start cycle. During the start cycle, startup displays. A 5-minute flush to drain takes place, followed by a 30-second conductivity check. If the conductivity value is too high, the flush to drain continues. To shorten the start cycle, the 5 minute flush to drain can be shortened to 5 seconds by keeping the start button pressed during the initial flush to drain until the display reads 0 minutes. The display shows rapid start if the hot water circulation has been performed during the start cycle. Startup displays in the start cycle extends a minimum of 10 minutes. The water diverts to the hot water tank until the temperature in the return line from the distribution loop is below 35 degrees Celsius. The stop button stops the CWP and initiates a standby mode. Pauses the chemical disinfection cycle, the CWP unit stops and stopped, flashes in the display. Disinfection cycles resume by pressing disinfect. The disinfect button starts this chemical disinfection cycle. Remaining time shows on the display. Stopped displays if the cycle is interrupted. To continue the chemical disinfection cycle, press Disinfect. The blank white button is used for programming days of the week in the time channels. The status button displays information on the current mode of operation of the CWP and its status. The Information button. This button is enabled when a display text in reverse type occurs just above the button. The display text indicates the present function of the button. The HW Start button starts hot water circulation. The HW Stop button stops hot water circulation. The Number buttons, or keypad, permits entering codes and parameters during programming. The Home button returns the operator to the main CWP menu. The previous and next arrow buttons allow for navigation back and forth to screen displays. 
The alarm button lists current and past alarms. The alarm acknowledgement button resets alarms. The arrow buttons move the cursor on the display. The clear button erases unwanted data during programming. It's similar to the backspace button on a computer keyboard. The enter button confirms entered information. It's also used to perform commands. The enter button will display setting ranges if pressed without first entering a value. The CWPRO parameters should be checked and recorded daily to ensure proper operation. The RO must be in operation when recording these parameters. To access the monitoring information, press the Home Menu button. Move the cursor until it's flashing on the line that reads CWP Info. Press Enter to access the CWP Info screen. The following parameters will be displayed. Use the up and down arrows to scroll through the screen. Inlet water flow rate, product water flow rate, RO reject flow rate, and return water flow rate. Product water consumption, conductivity in, conductivity out, recovery rate, rejection rate. Also available are temperature return, tank temperature, and tank level. A log sheet is included in the operator's manual that can be used to record this information. Otherwise, record information as specified by facility policy and procedures. When an alarm occurs, an alarm bell symbol will be displayed in the upper right corner of the display screen. In order to determine the cause of the alarm, the operator must press the alarm button. The alarm list will display the last 32 alarms that have occurred, with the most recent alarm at the top of the list. Four attempts are automatically made to self-clear alarms by the CWP prior to alerting the operator of an alarm state. The current alarm will have an asterisk symbol in front of it. If the cause of the alarm has been corrected before the alarm has been acknowledged, then the asterisk symbol will change to a minus symbol. Examples would include a low-level inlet alarm and a low-level chemicals alarm. The operator must select the alarm. If necessary, then press the alarm acknowledgement button to acknowledge the alarm. To acknowledge the alarm, ensure that the cursor on the alarm list points at the alarm to be acknowledged, an asterisk symbol in front of the alarm. If not, Move the cursor with the arrow buttons and press the alarm acknowledgement button. Then the asterisk symbol will disappear and the alarm light on the external lamp unit goes from flashing to a steady light. If the fault still remains, a minus symbol will show before the alarm after acknowledgement. A dollar sign symbol indicates an alarm that is no longer active but has not been acknowledged. In some cases, consecutive alarms may occur. It's important to acknowledge all alarms. Use the arrow buttons to find all alarms and take action. When the fault has been restored, press the status button to return to normal display. For a complete alarm list and troubleshooting guide, please refer to the service manual. The CWP unit is connected to the lamp indication unit and buzzer unit. The lamp indication unit gives information about the present state of the CWP unit. A separate additional light is placed in a suitable location with good visibility in the patient treatment area. The buzzer unit issues an audible alarm sound when an alarm occurs. The audible alarm is silenced by pressing the button on the buzzer unit. A steady green light indicates that the system is in normal operation. A blinking green light indicates that the system is not ready for operation. It occurs five minutes prior to a startup when the CWP is flushing to drain, five minutes prior to a program shutdown, or when the return product water temperature is elevated. A steady yellow light indicates that the pump in the heating unit is in operation 
circulating hot water in the distribution loop. A blinking yellow light is a warning that a hot water disinfection is about to occur. A steady white light indicates that a chemical disinfection is in progress. A blinking white light indicates that a chemical disinfection is finished, but the residual test has not yet been performed and verified by entering the operator's code. A blinking orange light notifies the operator that an alarm type B has occurred. The RO will not stop water production. A steady orange light indicates that the B alarm has been acknowledged, but the cause of the alarm still remains. An example of a B alarm is battery low PLC. A blinking red light indicates that an alarm type A has occurred. The RO will stop water production. A steady light. The A alarm has been acknowledged, but the cause of the alarm still remains. An example of an A alarm is high conductivity. The CWP can be operated in two different modes, auto start mode and manual mode. Auto start mode is the preferred method of operation as it allows for nightly heat disinfection and daily startup and shutdown of the RO. The auto start mode operates via the time channels that allow for automatic heat disinfection of the RO, start, stop, based on times chosen for clinic operation. Refer to the CWP service manual for more details. Time channels are used to control the automatic functions of the CWP RO, minimizing the need for operators interaction. If the CWP has been set to operate via the time channels, the start time is typically set a minimum of 30 minutes prior to staff arrival, allowing for the CWP to start up and perform a mandatory 15-minute rinse flush. Staff can take required chlorine samples and record operating parameters after 15 minutes of operation. If the CWP has been set to operate via the time channels, the stop time is typically set at a minimum of 60 minutes after the last patient of the day. The high temp period controls the time to preheat the hot water in the hot water tank from its base temperature of 60 to 90 in preparation for hot water circulation. It's recommended to program the high temp period to begin heating the hot water tank two hours in advance of circulation, ensuring that the water has sufficient time to reach 90 degrees Celsius. Operation controls the starting and stopping operation of the RO. Multiple configurations can be set up to accommodate long or short days, nocturnal treatments, disinfection of equipment, etc. If the CWP has been set to operate via the time channels, the start time is typically set at a minimum of 30 minutes prior to staff arrival, allowing for the CWP to start up and perform a mandatory 15-minute rinse flush. Staff can take required chlorine samples and record operating parameters after 15 minutes of operation. If the CWP has been set to operate via the time channels, the stop time is typically set at a minimum of 60 minutes after the last patient of the day. Integrated heat controls the time set for different water loss values if using the CWP to disinfect dialysis machines supply inlet lines. Hot water CERP controls automatically the turning on and off of hot water circulation. The amount of time required for circulation depends on loop length, insulation, and ambient temperature. Typically, two hours is a sufficient amount of time for proper bacteria control. A blinking yellow light will be lit before hot water disinfection, and a steady yellow light will be lit during hot water disinfection. After the hot water disinfection has been completed, the CWP goes into standby or into operation depending on the time channel settings. Prior to operation, an additional 10-minute flush occurs to cool the distribution loop. Patient treatment can begin when the lamp indication unit displays a steady green light. When in operation, the green light on the lamp indication unit will start to flash, 
five minutes prior to the programmed end of operation. A program post run mode will delay one hour, the automatic stop, and is verified when an arrow appears on the display. Post run delays the CWP operation stopping as programmed in the time channels. To enable post run, press the home button. Use the arrow button to scroll to technician info, press enter. At level 2, enter code 789 and press enter. Use the arrow button to scroll down to post run. Move the cursor to no, press enter changing the text to yes, enabling post run. Press the start button until an arrow appears on the display. The program stopping of the CWP operation will be delayed one hour. The following information describes the manual operating mode. For additional details, please refer to the CWP Operator's Guide and Service Manual. Press Start on the Operator's Panel. Startup is shown in the display. A 5-minute flush to drain occurs, followed by a 30-second conductivity test. If the conductivity is below alarm limits, the system is ready for patient treatment. If the conductivity is not below the alarm limits, Flushing continues and the product water will not be sent for distribution until the conductivity drops below the alarm limits. Patient treatment can begin when the lamp indication unit displays a steady green light. If heat disinfection has occurred the night before, a 10-minute cool-down will occur followed by a 5-minute TDS flush to drain. To perform a manual stop, press Stop on the Operators Panel. The CWP will go into standby mode. The arrow symbol indicates that the CWP unit is operating in manual mode and must be stopped by a manual action and not by the auto start mode as programmed in the time channels. A manual heat disinfection of the distribution loop is required on a daily basis when heat disinfection is not programmed in the auto start mode. Hot water disinfection can be accomplished by circulating 90 degree water throughout the distribution loop typically for two hours. The hot water which is circulated through the distribution loop does not come in contact or disinfect the RO membranes. Hot water circulation will continue until either the mode is deselected or the automatic RO start function activates. This procedure is to be performed after the dialysis machines have completed the clean, disinfect, rinse cycles and are powered off. Press the stop button to stop operation. Ensure the deionization system and other accessories attached to the distribution loop are bypassed or disconnected prior to initiation of heat disinfection. Failure to do so will damage the deionization tanks, manifold, and resin. The standby message will be displayed. Press the home button. Scroll to Technician Info and press Enter. Scroll to Man High Temp HW. Move the cursor to No. Press Enter to change the command to Yes. Pressing the Status button will return to the Status screen display. The heating element will begin increasing the temperature of the hot water tank to reach 90 degrees after approximately 2 hours. After waiting until the temperature displays at least 90 degrees, Locate the cursor in the upper left corner of the display. Enter the operator's code 813 and press enter. Press the HW start button. After two to three minutes, the heat disinfection of the distribution loop will begin. Caution! The hot water circulating in the loop can reach temperatures of 90 degrees Celsius. Use extreme caution before touching any exposed distribution loop, piping, or valves. After a two hour manual heat disinfection time, press HW stop. This stops the operation of the hot water circulation pump. Program the hot water tank high temperature off. Scroll to man high temp HW. Move cursor to yes. Press enter to change the command back to no. Press start. The CWP starts a 10 minute flush of the distribution loop to remove the hot water from the loop followed by a flush to drain of the RO membranes for 5 minutes. Dialysis machines can be started 
when the display goes to operation and the lamp indication unit displays a steady green light. The following information details chemical disinfection of the RO. Startup after chemical disinfection is the same for auto start or manual operating modes. A minimum weekly chemical disinfection of the RO is recommended. For additional details, please refer to the CWP Operator's Guide and Service Manual. The chemical wand is telescoping in length. Insert the wand at a 45 degree angle into the disinfectant container. Slide the cap shield into the jug to prevent backsplash. Check the level and date recorded on the disinfectant container. If the level doesn't change, the chemical intake may have failed. Enter the operator's code 813 and press enter. This is not required if a manual hot water circulation has just been initiated. Press disinfect. Press disinfect again if disinfect is to be performed. The double entry requirement is a precaution to prevent accidental initiation of a chemical disinfection. When prompted, open the front door on the CWP and move the solution connector, aka dosing connector, to the disinfection position. Do this by twisting the connector counterclockwise and pulling the connector outward. Then, insert the connector into the disinfection port and turn the connector clockwise to secure in place. Press disinfect for a third and final time. The CWP will automatically perform a disinfection program which will last for 132 minutes. The remaining time is displayed continuously on the operator's panel. The time for each phase of the disinfection process consists of a 6-minute valve test before chemical disinfection, a 15-minute disinfection intake, a 15-minute circulation of the chemical disinfectant, followed by a 90-minute rinse, and then concludes the total 132-minute disinfection process with a final 6-minute valve test. When prompted after the 132-minute disinfection program has been completed, open the front door on the CWP and move the dosing connector to operation. Check the chemical level of the chemical disinfectant container, mark the level, and record the date. Press Start. Pressing Start initiates a flush to drain. After approximately one minute, collect a water sample in the drain funnel on the right side of the CWP and test for residual disinfectant. If needed, continue flush to drain and repeat water sampling until there is no reaction from the test strip. A test for residual MinCare HD disinfectant after rinse must be performed before the initiation of the next dialysis session. MinCare HD test strips provide quick results with easy-to-read indicators. Enter the operator's code 813 and press Enter. Once the water is free of disinfectant, press Stop. Press Start. Dialysis machines can be started when the display goes to operation and the lamp indication unit displays a green steady light. This concludes the CWP-100 Operator's Guide. Additional technical biomedical training classes are available. Please contact your water systems sales specialist for additional information.